So is it possible to live in a house or apartment for free? In this video, we are exploring some real life strategies that you can use to pay $0 for housing. Yes, I said it with house hacking, you can live in a house or duplex or triplex and pay little to nothing. And best of all, you don't need to be rich to start. So why aren't more people doing this? Well, it's pretty complicated and it's a lot harder than it looks. But before we explore how you can start house hacking, it helps to have a clear definition of what house hacking is. House hacking is when you rent out part of your primary residence to tenants and the rent that those tenants pays you helps to offset or fully cover the mortgage and cost of ownership. I did this for a few years after buying my first property and it greatly reduced my living expenses here in Los Angeles. So yeah, I owe a lot to house hacking. Here are the pros of house hacking. First is you build equity, right? Whenever you're paying off your mortgage, there are two parts of that. One is your interest, so that's the cost of borrowing the money. And the second is paying down your principal or the equity you have in the home. This is basically just like a forced savings account. And it's cool because a portion of your mortgage payment is just going back into your equity in the home. So it's literally just building your net worth. The second is you have the option to put a really small down payment on the home. And since you're living there, you get access to really great interest rates. This means that you don't have to have a ton of money saved up in the bank. It also means that the cost of borrowing money is extremely low, especially right now. The third pro of house hacking is it allows you to get involved in real estate investing as soon as possible. Since you're able to put such a small down payment, this is really one of the best ways for anyone to get into real estate investing. And you'll find that once you get comfortable with house hacking, you'll probably move on to bigger and better deals. And of course, one of the biggest things with house hacking is that you are saving a ton of money. Most Americans are spending like 30 to 40% of their income on housing. So just think about if you got rid of this payment, how much money you'd end up saving. Now, the first step in house hacking is intent. You need to intend to live there as your primary residence. That and you also have to be okay becoming a landlord. House hacking is not for everyone and you need to be prepared for the downsides. This includes reduce privacy and you'll likely need to at least share some common spaces like the driveway, the backyard, or any other common areas. The level of privacy invasion depends on what type of home you are buying. If you're buying a house or a condo, you'll probably have to share the kitchen and the living room. If you're buying a duplex, then you'd only have to share the driveway or maybe the backyard. So yes, house hacking is less comfortable than being the only person living on your property but the trade-off is worth it for most people. Second is you need to run the numbers. We want to figure out what your budget is and how much house you can afford. So to do this, we will want to speak with a mortgage lender in your area. Tell them about your situation and about how you want to house hack and then give them your financial information. They're going to work with you to come up with a plan on how to best carry out the house hacking process. You can also speak with a real estate agent as well as they do have really good insights into the local market and what rents you should expect. It also helps to do your own research too. So here are my tips on finding good properties to house hack. Basically, we are looking for properties with as much potential as possible to generate revenue. For example, let's say that you want to buy a house and are okay with roommates. Ideally, we'd want to find a house with many bedrooms, which means that you can live in one of them and rent out the rest. The more bedrooms, the better your numbers are going to be. Also, I want you guys to think outside the box. Is there an opportunity to do a short-term rental on Airbnb? For example, you could build something like an ADU in the backyard and build a separate entrance, or you could park an RV on your lot and rent that out. You could also convert spaces into additional rooms. So maybe you take something like an unlivable basement and then add a bathroom and kitchen and all that stuff. There's a lot more to it than just having more bedrooms and you need to be aware of that. Now, if you're looking for a duplex, triplex, or fourplex, then you could live in one unit and rent out the others. So obviously the more rentable units, the better. A triplex has twice as many rental units as a duplex because with a duplex, you can only rent out one unit and with a triplex, you have two rentable units. And even better is a fourplex where you have three rentable units. Now, anything four units or smaller is going to count as a residential property, which is where you want to be. Commercial properties of anything with five or more units is going to be considered a commercial property. And commercial properties can be great for more advanced uh, investors, but the loan terms are way worse and I just don't recommend it for a first time house hacker. The best deals are going to involve some type of blend between creativity and potential revenue and each area and property is going to be different. What works in one city might not work in another, and this has a lot to do with permit laws and rental rates. So now let's go through an example of a sample deal, which may or may not be possible depending on where you live. Let's say you buy a home for $500,000 and you put a down payment of 5%. 
This means that you're getting a loan for $475,000 and putting 25K down. With an interest rate of 3% and a loan term of 30 years, this means that your monthly mortgage payment is going to come out to around $2,700 per month. Now, right off the bat, you can see that with a low down payment of 5%, you're only putting down $25,000 and the monthly payment of $2,700 is not too bad, especially if you consider the fact that you could potentially rent out some of these rooms or if it's a multi-unit property, then you can rent out those other units. So best case scenario, let's say that this $500,000 property is a fourplex. We have four units total, so I'm gonna draw that right here. You are going to be living in one of them, so this is you, and you're gonna have three units that you can rent out. Now this is gonna really depend on where you live, but let's say that uh, you can rent out each of these units for $1,000 per month. So 1,000, 1,000, and 1,000. This means that in total, you are bringing in $3,000 per month in rental income. And if we compare that to the $2,700 monthly payment, you can see that there is a net surplus of about $300. So this is going to be your profit each and every month. This means that you literally get to live for free in your unit and have your three tenants pay down your mortgage build your equity in the home. And yeah, it comes out to you making $300 to live in that property. So you can see just how amazing this type of house hacking can be, especially if you can find the right type of deal. Another really great way to house hack is to buy a fixer upper for cheap, renovate it, and then live in it for at least two years as your primary residence. The reason why this is amazing is because of capital gains tax. Let's say you buy a property for $300,000 you spend about $50,000 to renovate it, meaning your all-in cost is going to be $350,000. After living there for two years, the house is now worth $500,000, which means that there is a profit of 150K. So this is your profit. Now, normally when you buy an asset and then sell it for more later on, you're going to be subject to capital gains tax. This long-term capital gains tax is going to be 0, 15, or 20% depending on your income level. So let's say you're in the highest income bracket, meaning you're paying 20% for long-term capital gains. This means that you're going to be subject to $30,000 in taxes on this sale. Now, the amazing thing is if you actually live in this property for two or more years, the IRS is not going to tax you on up to $250,000 in capital gains, or if you're married, $500,000 in capital gains. So right off the bat, you can see just how amazing this strategy is because you can sort of combine the house hacking with this tax advantage. And if you're young and you want to live with college students, house hacking works extremely well if you live in a college town. You could rent out maybe like a house with let's say five bedrooms, live in one of those bedrooms. So if I were doing it myself, I'd probably keep the master bedroom. And then the other four bedrooms, I would rent out to college students. This is a really great way to house hack. And I know a lot of people that have done this successfully. Now, house hacking is guaranteed to lower your housing bill, but it might not make it completely free. In high cost of living areas like Los Angeles, the Bay Area, and New York, it's very, very difficult to house hack your way to a $0 monthly housing payment. The housing costs are just too high here and the rental rates have not caught up to the house values at all. For example, a $50,000 home in Missouri could rent out for let's say $400 per month. So that rental to value ratio is quite high. On the other hand, a $500,000 home in California will probably rent out for only $2,500 per month. So if you do the math and compare it to the Missouri property, the value of the home is 10 times higher, but the rental rate is only about six times higher. Now, even though you might not be able to live for free, it's still a heck of a lot better than just getting your own one bedroom place and paying a lot of money. For example, when I rented out the other room in my condo, I was still paying out of pocket each and every month. But renting out that room for about $1,400 per month meant that I was saving close to $17,000 per year by choosing to live with a roommate. And the net cost was much lower than if I had bought a one bedroom condo instead of a two bedroom condo and rented out that extra room. So really the more bedrooms, the better. So if I had bought in like a three bedroom place, numbers would have been even better. So keeping all this in mind and after speaking with your lender and real estate agent, the next step is buying your property. I'm not going to dive deep into this because you'll learn as you do it and you'll see that it could take months to find a property and get your offer accepted or it could be as quick as a few 
weeks. But what I recommend doing is the moment you get your offer accepted, start thinking about how you're going to rent out the extra bedroom or the extra units. Find a good tenant that will make your life as a landlord easy because if you don't, you're going to really hate your life. You'll want to find out what the rental rates are in that area and how much you can realistically charge. If you're renting out a room on Airbnb, try to create a separate entrance as this will make your life a lot easier. And always have a rental agreement in place for your long-term tenants, even if they are your friends. Once you've moved in and started renting out to tenants, you are officially a landlord. You'll collect checks each month and you'll see just how big of an impact this has on your financials. And in case you grow out of that house or multi-unit, you can always sell it after two years and likely pay zero capital gains tax on the profit from that sale. Now, I know that was a lot of information, but I hope it gave you a clear background on what house hacking is and some strategies you can use yourself to start owning real estate and building long-term wealth. The key is really to not overthink it. Find the property and make sure that the numbers look good, but don't get caught up so much in the details. What I want you guys to do is just understand how amazing house hacking can be and take action as soon as you can. Because in the long term, you're going to be really glad that you did. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As you can probably tell, I'm quite passionate on house hacking. And I really do think that it's such a great way for anyone to get into the whole real estate game. Real estate is for sure one of the best ways to build long-term wealth to build your net worth. And it's something that I'm really going to be investing heavily in this year. Anyways, if you liked the video, make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel to see more videos just like this. I make a ton of content about personal finance, investing, and entrepreneurship. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.